get out there, get something else in the ground today and see what those results are. In fact, let us know what you plant today. Guten yarding everybody. Well, I'm over here once again at our community garden. I'm actually taking a break in the shade of some raspberry canes. Not too shabby. It's a hot day out here, but I'm getting ready to do some succession planting. In the place where we had our corn and we harvested about half of that, I've got some eggplant seedlings. I've got some summer squash going in there. I'm even going to be planting some bush beans. And while I was doing that, I got to thinking. Sometimes I think we take too literally the instructions on the seed packet or the little label that comes with our seedlings. Now while I talk to you about what I mean by this, I'm going to roll some footage of me out here getting work done in the garden. All right, I'm going to start this off with a simple question. How many of you are consistently able to get all the plants that you want in the ground at the exact time they're quote unquote supposed to go in the ground? I think for many of us, that's a pretty big challenge because you have to have your plants all ready to go. You have to have time set aside, dedicated to going ahead and getting those plants in the ground. And so I don't actually think it's all that common that that happens. But for many vegetables, just because it's ideal to plant at a specific time doesn't mean that that's the only time that you can plant. You know, one of the things that we've talked about on this channel for some time now is this idea of succession planting. When one crop's done, we have another crop ready to go in. So our corn is coming out. We have our seedlings ready to go in. And is it ideal right now, we're at the beginning of August in zone five, for us to go ahead and put these summer squash in the ground? Or is it ideal for the eggplant to just be going in right now? No, but we still have about 70 days here at the community garden before that closes down. And so that's enough time if the weather holds for us to still get some production out of these plants. And so what we're doing here today by putting in some of these seedlings that we had ready to go is we're going to take advantage of the time that we have left, which is about 71 days before the community garden here closes to see if we can get some additional production. Now, when I say that we take these seed packets just a little too literally, I am not in any way suggesting that we just discard what is said on those packets because the reality is the reason why they tell you that certain plants should be planted or started four weeks before the last frost or they should go direct to seed in the ground in March, April, whatever. The reason they say that is because that typically is the optimal time frame for best production. And so if we can make that happen, that's fantastic and that's ideal typically again for our production but we shouldn't just limit ourselves to what's on those packets because then what happens is well a couple of things one if you didn't get the plants planted when you wanted to in that sweet spot there's the possibility that you're going to get discouraged and say well hey i missed it this year i'm not going to bother but next year and next year becomes next year becomes next year and think of all that growing potential that you waste out on or the other thing that often happens is you've successfully put in whatever vegetables you want at the beginning of the season and then you wait until the end of the season you get a harvest and that's fantastic there's nothing wrong with that except that you know, most of us absolutely garden because we want the food, but also because we love gardening. And so why limit yourself to just that beginning and end time with the occasional weeding, or if it rains a lot, maybe the frequent weeding in between? Yes, there's work that we do in terms of maintenance in the garden, but I can say here at Guten Yardening, we have been planting all season long. I don't think there's been two or three days that have gone by where we haven't put something else either into a container or somewhere else in the garden. And the benefit of doing this is that means that we're spreading out our harvests over a longer period of time. It's kind of like planting pole beans. You plant a set of pole beans one week, you wait two or three weeks, you plant your next set, and then you're guaranteed harvest over a much longer period. Or as a teacher, what I can tell you is there are times whenever I've made the mistake of assigning all my students a homework assignment, a writing assignment that I then have to grade all of them 
all at once and that just is can be overwhelming well if all of your harvest is ready to go at the same time you have to have the time to pick it to put it up whether that's canning freezing whatever that is and again it can be overwhelming so giving yourself a little window there in order to get your harvest in also is not a bad thing quite frankly when you have a growing season like we do here in zone 5 which is not the longest growing season we need to do whatever we can to take optimal advantage of all the days that includes for us having a fall garden and so if we're going through and we have these seedlings ready to go for a succession planting for a different time of the year even though right now may not be the ideal time for these eggplant or the ideal time for our beans or our summer squash there is still time for us to get some productivity so that ideal window for planting is exactly that it's ideal but it's not definitive it's not the only possibility and so we want to encourage you not to be the person who misses a window and says I can't put anything else in the garden but instead be somebody who says well I may not get the best production but I have these plants left over I have these seeds that could go in the ground I still have some time left in my season let me see what I can do with that that's exactly what we're doing with our succession planting here and even though it's a really hot day I'm enjoying every single second of being out here putting these plants in the ground because I know the potential that they hold plus I've got some more corn here to pick that I'm going to take advantage of today and on a hot day if you can pull off a fresh ear of corn that's something that's quite refreshing in my opinion well we hope you enjoyed this video hey get out there get something else in the ground today and see what those results are in fact let us know at the end of the season what the results are from the thing that you plant today if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give us a like leave us a comment remember to share and subscribe and most importantly remember when you're with us you are good to grow